Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to reporters here on France 24 and welcome to this week's reporter, Valérian Gauthier. Welcome to you. Thank you. Valérian's been speaking to one of the most controversial uh, people of modern times, Edward Snowden, and to a group of people who say their lives are in danger because they helped him evade an investigation. You remember it was June 2013 when Edward Snowden revealed the extent to which the Americans were spying on not just ordinary people but high-level politicians. It caused a major embarrassment and for a period of time he went missing. This is the story of the people who helped him. Exactly. It's a story that was unknown for a very long time. Uh, it's the story about what happened between uh, Edward Snowden's revelations and the day he fled to Moscow. So for 13 days, when everyone was looking for him, uh, the American government and uh, many uh, uh, secret services, intelligence services, were after him. And during that whole period, he was actually hiding among, among the refugees community in one of the poorest areas of of Hong Kong, an area called Sham Shui Po, and that is where the refugees community lives, a community that is marginalized and despised. Valerian, thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look now at Valerian's report along with Mohamed Farhat and Francois Riouet. In the busy streets of Hong Kong, Ajit Pushpa Kumara is just another face in the crowd. But in June 2013, his life changed forever when he crossed paths with Edward Snowden. Ajit ended up serving as an informal bodyguard for the whistleblower on the run. This is the Mirama Hotel, and there is Mrs. Snowden living here. The former NSA contractor had just revealed how mass surveillance was being used by American secret services to spy on its own citizens and on allied governments across the world. Because even if you're not doing anything wrong, you're being watched and recorded. Confined to room 1014 at the Mira Hotel, Snowden shared his proof with documentary filmmaker Loa Poitras and The Guardian's journalist Glenn Greenwald. Soon after, he became the most wanted man on the planet. Hunted by the U.S. government and several intelligence agencies, he reached out to Robert Thibault, a Canadian lawyer well known for defending asylum seekers in the region. A very early morning of the 10th of June, which is a Monday morning, um, I received a phone call uh, before 7 a.m and it was a request for help. Hi. Hi, I'm the uh, client. Hi, 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 how are you holding up? Uh, pretty good, uh, I'm doing well. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for helping yeah, me. He's, this, he's quite worried about the next, next day, about the accommodation, or he's going to stay, uh, whether there's something pirate and they cannot be discovered by the police. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, Human rights lawyer Robert Thibault masterminded the plan to hide Snowden in one of Hong Kong's poorest neighborhoods. The refugee community, or the asylum-seeking community, is so discriminated against and marginalized, they're Hong Kong's version of untouchables. It's highly unlikely anybody will be looking there. Um, Hong Kong society and government uh, would never expect that Mr. Snowden would be living with or hiding within this community that's so marginalized. So in effect, hiding him in plain sight. It was in Mr. Snowden's best interest that he go underground, that he be, you know, disappear off the radar. Six years later, in an exclusive interview with France 24, Snowden recounts this episode of his escape. But for me, you know, it, was, uh, it was a little bit uh, crazy, but at the same time, it was genius. Um, because this was definitely the one place that, that no one was going to look for me. Um, that was a very different world uh, than I had been used to living in, of course. I've lived a pretty privileged existence. Ajit is among those who hid the fugitive, allowing him to avoid capture by the police and the intelligence agents on his heels. He's very fed. Uh, is scared because he also know any uh, protection here. 
he also uh, I mean, USA people coming here to catch they had to something killing or something I know the road somewhere the Kowloon Hong Kong side little, I know the some everywhere so I give the protection I I go with him the road then I give with him the taxi a former soldier Ajit fled his home country of Sri Lanka in 2003. He explains that he was repeatedly harassed and raped by his superiors before being tortured and thrown into jail for treason. In the end, he decided to desert the army. Mr. Snowden owes his safety and most likely his life to these refugees like Ajith, who agreed to protect him, to guide him through this city he didn't know. They kept him safe when he was the most wanted man on earth. Thanks to his military training and his acute sense of survival skills, Ajith managed to live in Hong Kong without any resources. So he was the ideal person to ensure that Mr. Snowden would be able to move safely around Hong Kong when it was necessary. Marc-André Seguin, who also serves as a lawyer for Snowden's Guardian Angels, founded a non-profit organization called For the Refugees to support them. He introduced us to Supun Kalapata and Nadika Dilrukshi. The couple also welcomed the fugitive into their home. That time we don't know anything about it's not done. But next day we understand because we saw the newspaper. The second day he was, so I find the newspaper for him. Then I will check out my computer and keep, I show it to him. This is you, this is you, this is you. He say, yes, me, it's me. Then I, I find new, new news, I say, it's you. Yeah, and say, Supun, uh, don't try to find me too much because <laughs> maybe you uh, uh, spy, spy you. It was amazing the the little things that they they would do to try to make me comfortable because I think they they could obviously tell uh, how stressed and intense uh, I was how uh, worried I was and they were realistically I think realizing that any day the police were going to knock on the door. Despite the risks and with barely enough resources to feed themselves, they sheltered the former CIA employee in their tiny apartment. They gave him their bed while they slept on the floor in the hallway. Every single minute, it's memory for me. So American, we thought he liked spaghetti, he liked uh, 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 pasta, and like uh, McDonald's, but uh, not at all. He liked uh, our Sri Lankan curry and food, and uh, he made Radhika cooking for him. He, li he don't like eat vegetable. <laughs> he like eat the, the, the meat. He like it, the cake, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ask him how much your salary. Then he tell his salary. So I'm very upset, you know, because the, like Sri Lankan, one year salary, he get one month. They ask him, where you work? He say, Hawaii. I like Hawaii, you know, beautiful place in the planet. Then I say, you stupid, you know. I told him, look at my life, I ask him. You see, I have nothing. I'm a refugee. But your, your job, your salary, your life, is like a dream. So I said, well, you stupid, why you did? But he said, I did the right thing. In 2016, the release of a film directed by Oliver Stone turned their lives upside down. Thank you. This is Ed, uh, Ed Nyan. Suddenly, the role they played in Snowden's escape was revealed. You may not feel it, Ed. You're not alone. Since then, they've been hounded by Hong Kong authorities. Arrested on several occasions, they've been questioned about their ties to Edward Snowden. The little support they received from the government was cut. We lost the home. We go somewhere. I remember we brought them on the street and we sleep different places. We are asylum seekers. So Hong Kong anytime any, can deport anybody to their own country. Supun fled Sri Lanka because of political persecution. Nadika, because she was sexually abused. Today, they're afraid for their children, born in Hong Kong and stateless. They know how have... <laughs> <laughs> They 
they know how life um, in Hong Kong or my country. A very unsafe Every single minute we are danger. Every single minute you can see we go outside, we need to go four people together. All live in constant fear. If they're deported, they could face torture and death. If the guardian angels are deported by Hong Kong authorities to their home country, Sri Lanka, Supan and Nadika will be tortured and jailed, maybe even worse. The children will be separated from their parents and they'll be exposed to human trafficking. Ajith, being a deserter, will definitely face a death sentence. It would be a nightmare. They would all be going back to hell. Their lawyer, Robert Thibault, is also facing reprisal. He's been under financial pressure. As he explains, the Hong Kong state-appointed legal services are retaining about 400,000 euros of his fees. And the Hong Kong Bar Association has tried to disbar him. He now lives in exile between France and Canada. The Hong Kong Bar Association has done everything to try to have me uh, interfered with or removed from these cases or disbarred. This is toxic. Um, I never said that I helped Mr. Snowden escape. This is politically fueled. When the bar made demands that I answer questions from them, I realized these, most of these questions are arbitrary and they are just fishing for some evidence to use against me. And if you look at the first question, it is, how did you initially come into contact with Mr. Snowden? Their only interest was gathering intelligence on Mr. Snowden. The help provided by these refugees to Edward Snowden in 2013 was legal. Back then, there was no arrest warrant against the man who had just fled Hawaii with 1.7 million classified documents. The whistleblower believes he owes his life to these unexpected allies who could have turned him in at any time. They could have written an email to the, to the CIA, you know, and they could have uh, gotten checks for whatever they wanted. They could have finally, uh, you know, gotten asylum and, and had no problems whatsoever. Uh, but they would have had to do it by, by selling someone into a grave. Uh, and for that, I'll never be able to repay them. See you soon, okay? Say bye. Bye. Hello, hello. See you soon. Given all the dangers they face in Hong Kong, Snowden's guardian angels have asked for asylum in Canada. One of them, Vanessa Rodell, has been granted refugee status. She arrived in Montreal in May with her daughter, Kiana. They're now permanent residents in the country. Vanessa is excited about starting a new chapter in her life. She now takes French lessons and hopes to study at the prestigious McGill University. So I'm so lucky I'm the one of the uh, Edward Snowden Angel uh, because, you know, now I'm here in Canada. So, you know, I'm free, I'm safe, and um, I can start my new life. But the other refugees, whose lives are at stake, are constantly on her mind. I'm just worried also about the situation with Supun's family right now, because I know they also have the same situation with me before. I'm very worried about the kids, uh, because, you know, they, they're young, they're very innocent. They have the right, same like with Kiana. It's very unfair with them. And you not you not do anything wrong. You just help the guy that needs help. And I, for me, Edward Snowden is he just do the right thing, and I just help him. Vanessa and the refugees' lawyers are calling on Ottawa to act quickly. Despite the urgency of the situation, immigration services seem to be stalling. C'est un délai. It's an unusual delay given that all the asylum cases were submitted at the same time. 
They present similar situations and until recently, they were all being processed together. The three families were interviewed by Canadian consular officials at the same time in October. They've given us their decision on Vanessa's situation, but we're still waiting regarding the others. We don't understand why, it's a question we've been repeatedly asking the Canadian authorities. For Robert Thibault, the Canadian government is being intimidated by its powerful neighbour. Definitely there's been pressure from the United States in my view. All the evidence points to um, political considerations having impact on the pace of the Canadian government making their decisions on their cases, the Snowden refugee cases. Washington, D.C. is still after Edward Snowden because they've indicted him for uh, three, three charges under the Espionage Act related to theft, theft and distribution of uh, the data he took, which basically exposed the illegal, uh, egregious conduct of the U.S. government spying on its own civilians. From Moscow, Edward Snowden is trying to help his saviors. Please protect these families. Just bring them to Canada. Uh, I promise you, uh, if they were good to me, they will be good to you. Um, these are the best of the kind of people that we have among us anywhere in the world, uh, and they need your help. Please keep them safe. Snowden's guardian angels believe they're paying a very heavy price for helping the man responsible for one of the most significant leaks in U.S. political history. But they have no regrets. Our reporter, Valerian Gauthier, is still with us. Thank you so much for that fascinating insight into a part of Snowden that I think few people were aware of. Um, I wonder what the latest is on those asylum seekers that you met. Well, the refugees are still waiting for a reply from the Canadian Immigration Services. Their lawyers keep on reminding them how urgent it is to act, because as you saw in the, our report, they are living in constant danger in Hong Kong. And uh, you can feel that the Canadian government is at unease regarding this. Uh, we requested an interview with Immigration Minister Ahmed Hussein. First, his press officer replied that they would be happy to give us an interview on Friends 24. But when I told them what the interview was going to be about, that I was going to ask questions about the Snowden refugees, suddenly the minister was too busy to give us that interview. Indeed. And what about Edward Snowden himself? I mean, clearly he's been on the run since June 2013 when all this blew up. He then obviously re-emerged in Moscow. What's his situation now? Well, currently, Edward Snowden is still uh, living in Russia. He obtained asylum uh, in Russia until uh, 2020. And uh, to earn a living, he's uh, giving video conferences, especially regarding uh, press freedom and cybersecurity. Uh, he keeps on saying that he'd love to be able to one day go back to the US, to go back home. But you have to know that in the US, he's facing up to 30 years in jail because he has been charged under the S Espionage Act, and his lawyers have been in talks with uh, the U.S. Justice Department, but so far they haven't been able to get any insurance uh, regarding uh, the fact that he would like to have a fair and public trial. So he remains there in Moscow. His revelations are incredibly embarrassing for the U.S. authorities. Valerian, thank you very much indeed. Report by Valerian and Mohamed Fahet and uh, François Rioé. You can see it again via our website, france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us.